um, took a job with Echo Bay Mines in their headquarters office in Denver, Colorado. Worked at Echo Bay for three years, effectively as a number cruncher. I have to say, though, um, that may not appeal to people, but that was a vertical learning curve. Uh, you know, I, I had all the basics in terms of the financial analysis, but I was doing real-time merger, acquisition, and um, just sort of gold market work for them. Uh, and I was by far the junior person on the executive floor. Was that about the time that Echo Bay were beginning to look into Latin America and they were in Ecuador at that time? Or was no, that later? Uh, that came just after that. Okay. Yeah. Um, they were looking at a number of uh, synergies with other mining companies at that point in time. Be believe it or not, peer companies might have been considered Barrick, uh, Placer. Um, I know, it goes back a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> it's going back a long ways. Yeah. But it, you know, when there were a lot of Canadian mining companies. When there were a lot of Canadian mining companies and there was a real feather in your cap for being a blue chip, you know, precious metals only company. So Echo Bay was great. Three I years. Just, three years at Echo Bay. In Denver. I, in Denver, Denver based. Yeah. And I decided, well, okay, I've spent five years out, so out of the field. If I'm getting back into exploration, best to do it now. And so in uh, actually late uh, 1990, hired on with Newmont. So I, I spent... Um, Does that mean you were back with Goral? Yeah, ironically back with Mr. Demo <laughs> as well. Tremendous. As a number of other people I knew. Yeah. yeah. And so I went to Wino. Gemmets was there. Uh, Bill Gemmets was there, yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I went to Reno, and that was short-lived. Um, almost immediately transferred to Ecuador to because I spoke some Spanish. Um, had worked in Latin America, bri even briefly, previously. Uh, had been studying Spanish and was in. I signed on to drill a project in the south, uh, southern coast of Ecuador called Gabi. Which I'll is, be to Gabi. It can get very messy when it rains. Uh, yes, we were there for seven months through the rainy season <laughs> and lots of high, knee high rubber boots. Yep. Um, yep. And uh, it affected. That was a very interesting exercise too because. Uh, Newmont had established just legal and accounting presence in Ecuador, but didn't have a team in place. So they were they were rotating in several um, North American geologists to run it. Gringos and gringas. There were no diamond drill rigs in Ecuador at that point in time, except for little winky drills, the little small um, small core diameter drills that were portable and worked. You could dismantle, carry them into the hills. We were planning, we were contemplating a, a longer campaign and um, had to go through the process of importing from Peru both drillers and drill rigs. That must be a nightmare. And then we drilled uh, 24 hour a day, three rigs turning um, for three months. And that was, uh, that was Gabby. And yeah. did you do any work elsewhere in Ecuador? You know, uh, Newmont also had some um, some early stage properties they were doing reconnaissance on using um, consultants, and uh, we visited those. But I was really focused on making making a decision point, getting to a decision point on Gabby, and and we came to that point. And after that, uh, uh, we tied that off. The decision was made. I got to go on the, the wonderful SEG Maracunga field trip was that at the end of that campaign in 91, okay. May of 91, <clears throat> um, which was spectacular. And thank then you, I was, thank you, Dick, thank you, Pancho. Thank you, Dick, thank you, Pancho, Nicholas Sarich, all of those uh, people. Yeah. Um, and then transferred permanently with Newmont to Chile, to Santiago. To Santiago.